And in conjunction with that, we've also seen um, Venezuela actually, even as it's under this kind of pressure, uh, provide some equipment to the Caribbean. And we've also been noticing um, Caribbean leaders like, uh, and I always mispronounce, this is a name I do mispronounce, Prime Minister Gonzalez, who is very Gonzales, impressive. Ralph Gonzalez, yeah. <laughs> yes. And Mia Motley from Barbados and others. I mean, that across a variety of areas, including trying to push back um, in, a, an invasion or intervention in Venezuela, which would, among other things, be a disaster for yeah. the Caribbean or a place like certainly Trinidad with its proximity, yeah. mm -hmm. um, by taking the support of the Cuban doctors and being in solidarity with Cuba as there's another push from the United States against Cuba, but also more generally trying to, as obviously a very small block in the shadow of the United States, uh, maintain some autonomy and sovereignty basically. And so can you just give us like a sense of that? Like who are these leaders? Where do the most of the um, political, like what are the political leanings of a lot of the of, of of a lot of these Caribbean states, and how are they banding together to maintain some independence in the United States? I mean, we've already seen, like as an example, obviously um, there's a difference between like a Jamaican response, um, as yeah. an example, versus versus others. Um, well, first of all, CARICOM is a very, when compared to these other um, international blocks, it's a, it's a young, relatively young one. What we've seen with the advent of Mia Motley to the chairmanship um, is that they are trying to have a united approach to treating with issues affecting the region. Um, Mia Motley is really very impressive with the way she's uniting the region. There is definitely... Um, a sort of camaraderie that you see between herself, um, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley out of Trinidad and Tobago, Grenada's Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell, um, St. Lucia's Prime Minister Alan Chassany, Ralph Gonzalez out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Um, I don't know if I mentioned Antigua and Barbados, Gaston Brown, but he as well. Um, I would say it's a 15 member block, um, but I would say that these five individuals are the most fearless in terms of denouncing and condemning um, intervention and calling for the Caribbean region to remain a zone of peace. Whereas you see countries like um, Jamaica, for example, which not only has taken a sort of hands-off approach, but has also sort of um, acted and participated in the U.S. efforts against Venezuela because we've seen um, Mike Pompeo announce that he was going to have a meeting in Jamaica. And that meeting was not to actually extend an invitation to all CARICOM leaders or members, but rather to um, just have the people who will of the same belief opinion um, as it relates to Venezuela and other issues affecting the region. And so he went there and um, kudos to Prime Minister Mia Motley, the CARICOM chair, because she refused to go. And then her refusal was also something that was supported by Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley and others. They sent out statements, you know, supporting her for her leadership and her position um, in saying that was a very disrespectful move by the U.S. government. Of course, the U.S. government backtracked and said, you know, it was never meant to be dis a disrespectful gesture, but of course it was. Um, we also see um, Dr. Hubert Minnis coming out of the Bahamas. He is someone who's also very supportive of the United States. And um, it, it's very interesting to see that in spite of the so-called alliance or allegiance to these countries, and especially the United States, these very sad Caribbean nations are finding themselves facing the same effects as the others who are choosing to be independent and acknowledge that, listen, this is a region, this is a zone of peace. And not only that, but we have a right to decide on how we choose to govern our own affairs. Um, Trinidad and Tobago and a lot of Caribbean countries have become collateral damage because of these US sanctions. Um, there was a dragon gas deal that was signed between the National Gas Company of Trinidad and Tobago, Venezuela's PDVSA, and Royal Dutch Shell. They were supposed to explore that gas field together, and it was supposed to generate jobs for both nations because it kind of straddles between uh, both countries. Unfortunately, the U.S. sanctions caused our Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Rowley, in February to 
announced that the, the arrangement could no longer continue. And in fact, more so now, Trinidad and Tobago is on its own threat, I would say, because the opposition has written to the U.S. ambassador um, in Trinidad and Tobago, calling for an investigation into reports that oil that was sold to Aruba was eventually delivered to Venezuela. Um, the U.S. government uh, officials um, mentioned that Trinidad and Tobago was opening up itself to sanctions for um what the uh, for whatever they are alleging, whereas the government has responded and said, um, not only was it that they only sold the gas to Aruba, but that they have no responsibility, legal or otherwise, to police where and how uh, gas gets to any other territory once it is sold and and their part of the contract was fulfilled. And um, when you ask about independence, you get a sense that if the opposition. Um, ends up in power. Um, elections in Trinidad and Tobago are constitutionally due by September 7th. You would definitely see Trinidad and Tobago now have a different position um, on Venezuela and, and, and affairs affecting Cuba, etc., based on which political party ascends to the leadership. And so it, we know Guyana had elections on March 2nd. There's a, a political deadlock at this point in time. Uh, CARICOM sent three um, members to, well, observers, a, a part of a mission to rally or uh, look over that the recount, which is supposed to take 25 days, 10 polling stations. If APNU AFC, which is the current ruling party, they sort of have a position where they and Venezuela have uh, a little tiff because they have their own issues with gas and what whatnot. If we see the PPPC, which is the opposition, actually become victorious in these polls, we'll definitely see Guyana for example, take a different approach and, and, and more so support of Venezuela. That's what I expect to see. Um, so that's how it sort of goes with these Caribbean nations in terms of independence and, and really supporting um, sovereignty, because that's really what it is. It's not necessarily supporting um, Venezuela's Maduro. It's really just saying this is a sovereign country and they are the people that are responsible for dealing with their own internal affairs. No other country should have any say on what takes place in Venezuela except Venezuela and Venezuelans. Therese, thank you so much. Therese Polo, she's an anchor, journalist for Telesor um, English. I would definitely watch Telesor as a very, very important to understand that viewpoint uh, for looking at the world, particularly in Latin America and the Caribbean. Therese, thank you, thank you so much. I hope you come on again. I will, once you invite me. Thank you so much. <laughs> you got it. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. You just watched a Michael Brooks show video. Subscribe to get them all. Why wouldn't you? Don't be foolish. Click subscribe below and become a patron as well. Patreon.com slash TMBS. Thanks, everybody.